and we are proclaiming this good news to you, the promise made to our fathers now become a reality. For this promise God has fulfilled for us his children by raising Jesus from the dead. Acts 13, 32 and 33 For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcision for the sake of God's truth, that is, to confirm the promises, that is, covenants, made to their ancestors, and also so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, that is, in providing salvation through Jesus. Romans 15, 8 and 9 Our capability comes from God, who has made us capable ministers of a new covenant, not the one of the letter, that is, the law, but one of the Spirit. That is, because the letter, that is, the law, puts us to death, but the Spirit brings us to eternal life. 2 Corinthians 3, 6 From mankind's point of view, hope is always the central idea behind the promises of God solemnized in covenant form that God has promised, sworn, and obligated himself to provide for our salvation, Old Covenant perspective, and that Christ has accomplished and fully ratified all the promises of the Old Testament through his blood, New Covenant perspective, is indescribably encouraging news, good news, that empowers and strengthens our hope that one day we shall indeed be with him, anchoring us, so to speak, to the heavenly home which is ours by virtue of our faith in Christ. Hebrews 6.19 The Old Covenant looked forward to the coming of the promised Messiah, to the redemption of all mankind through his work, Romans 11.27. With the advent of Jesus Christ and his work on the cross now an accomplished fact, the new covenant that God has made with all mankind includes not only forgiveness, but innumerable blessings besides, prominent among which is the gift of the Holy Spirit, John 7.39. Now that Christ has been resurrected, ascended to heaven, and sits at the Father's right hand, we who believe in him have received the gift of the Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts as well, an unfulfilled promise from the old covenant perspective, but, like the coming of Christ in the flesh, a reality under the new covenant. Jesus Christ is thus the key to these two phases of history which the two covenants represent. He is the unique prophet. Deuteronomy 18.17-19, through 19, the eternal priest, Psalm 110.4, and the promised king, Isaiah 9.6-7. and 7. He is the fulfillment of all the Old Testament promises, Romans 15.8, of the Old Covenant itself, 2 Corinthians 3.14, and Hebrews 7.22, and of the law, Romans 10.4, and Hebrews 7.12. He is the one who has delivered us from the bondage of the old covenant and brought us into the freedom of the new covenant. He it is who has mediated for us a better covenant than was in force before, a covenant built on better promises, Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, and Hebrews 8, 6, and 12, 24. The Mosaic law did not replace or invalidate any of the other promises or covenants in the Old Testament, for example, Galatians 3.17. Rather, it encapsulated them all, so to speak, into the one grand promise of salvation, rightly understood and interpreted. The law of the Old Covenant could not save us, but it did look forward to the coming of the one who could. The failure of the Jerusalem congregation and many Jews and Gentiles ever since has been to overlook that most critical of all truths and attempt to gain salvation through the works of the law rather than the faith it was meant to inspire, something God never intended, an impossible and blasphemous approach which has always been destined to stumble over Jesus Christ, the cornerstone of God's plan, and discover thereby a rock of offense. Isaiah 8. 14. Romans 9, 33, and 1 Peter 2, 8, the end result of which is slavery to sin and death instead of life eternal in Jesus Christ. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise, which things are symbolic. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and corresponds to Jerusalem which now is, 
and is in bondage with her children, but the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear. Break forth and shout, You who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the Scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Galatians 4.21-31 Dispensations Since the days of John the Baptist until this present time, the kingdom of God has been under violent attack, and violent men are laying hands upon it, that is, intensified satanic attack with the incipient change of dispensations. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John the Baptist, that is, the implication being that now Jesus Christ revealed, is the focus in the new dispensation of the Spirit soon to come. Matthew eleven twelve and 13 The law and the prophets were dispensing God's truth until John. Since that time the kingdom of God is being proclaimed, evangelized, literally offered as good news. Luke 16.16 16. But when the fullness of time came, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order that He might redeem those under the law, in order that we might receive the adoption. And since you are sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Galatians 4, 4-6 through six. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace, which He made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure which He purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in Him. Ephesians 1, 7-10 God who wants all men to be saved and come to accept the truth. For as God is one, so there is only one mediator between God and man, Christ Jesus in his humanity, who gave himself as a ransom for all mankind, having given us his testimony to this on the cross at the just the right time. 1 Timothy 2, 4-6 through six. As it is, once and for all at the conjunction of the ages, Christ has appeared to remove sin through the sacrifice of himself. Hebrews 9.26 As we have mentioned many times, the birth, life, sacrifice, and resurrection of Jesus Christ constitutes the great dividing line in human history. The cross separates all that came before from all that follows. Before the cross, salvation was given on credit, so to speak. Romans 3.25 and 26 Because Jesus had not yet come in the flesh and had not yet died for our sins, Believers of the past went to paradise below the earth after death. Only after the cross had become a reality, only after Christ had been resurrected, ascended, seated at the Father's right hand and glorified, only then could departed believers appear in God's presence in the third heaven. And only after the great victory of our Lord could the gift of the Holy Spirit be given. John 7.39 Thus it is that only on this side of the cross could the church age begin, the age of the great Holy Spirit-empowered expansion of Christ's assembly through the gospel, the good news about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ on our behalf. These dramatic events, the most important in all of human history, the rock, the rock, upon which all divinely constructed history is founded, occasioned many changes one of the most significant of which for our purposes in this study was the change of law Paul describes in Hebrews, Hebrews 7.12. This was a complete change of dispensation or divine administration of the plan of God, a mystery not anticipated before it happened, one which shifted the focus of that plan away from Israel under the Mosaic law and to the entire assembly of the church throughout the world in the power of the Holy Spirit instead, whereby all things were to be incorporated in the one who won that victory upon which the entire plan of God is predicated, the Messiah, our dear Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ.